Welcome back to Watercolor Theory. Today's video, I will be going over this rhinoceros and calf. Here is the photo credit. Colored pencil drawing. Obviously the finished painting. The cutouts that I did. I cut out key shapes and I also cut out the outline shape around the rhinoceros and calf. So a basically a contour and silhouette. And here is my color palette. And I pre-mixed those colors together um, in various degrees. And these are, this would be the first video where I'm utilizing granulating colors in the initial wash. Normally I don't do that, but I was very happy, am very happy with the way things turned out. So let's get going. So now I'm going to prepare the brushes, uh, blot up the paper a little bit and um, start putting down the paint, starting with blue. You can see when the paint hits, it bleeds into the paper a little bit since it is pre-wet. You can also see a little bit of a glare where the color or the paper is wrinkling a little bit. Here's a copy of the finished painting. Now I'm adding in primarily quinacridone magenta. It has some cobalt violet mixed into it. And now I'm letting it blend around. The green I mixed is still pretty much on the blue side, but there's a lot of yellow to mix with. Now I've got this psychedelic mix of colors. I'll put a lint free paper towel over it just to keep it from moving around so much and it will slowly absorb it, allowing the paint to soak in to the paper. Now we've got a little bit of yellow and blue mint green going on. Just a reminder, subscription to my channel is of no charge to you and it really helps me. So please subscribe. Now I'm doing some blotting. Didn't mix enough yellow in the beginning. So now I'm mixing some raw sienna. Raw Sienna is a granulated color. I don't usually use granulating colors in the initial wash, but I'm very happy with the outcome. And here's a copy of that finished painting again. I don't usually start with granulating colors because if they can settle in, they can be dislodged as well. But I was confident that I would be able to get the majority of the painting done in this process and then just go in lightly with a light touch, I should say, to uh, bring out the rhino and the calf, either through negative painting or direct painting. Now I've mixed in some manganese blue. So you can't see the, the rhino or the calf right now, 
this is uh, knowing that that was going to happen is why I cut out the outline of the rhino and the calf. You can see a little bit of the horn. Here's the final painting again, so you kind of have a reference point. Now I'm putting in, defining some of those edges that I can see. The color pencil does show through. You can especially see it on the horn. And uh, so I'm just going in, darkening it up. In a moment, I'll place the cutout over the painting because I'm really having a hard time seeing where the edges are. Um, and it also gives me kind of a reference for where the folds in the skin are. Um, but moving along here without those reference points. Putting it in kind of heavy, starting a little bit of a bead. Sometimes I have to remind myself to not direct paint as if it's acrylic or oil to really lay down some water and, and just let colors do what they want to do. Um, it will probably be a challenge for, for a while, but I'm always reminding myself of, of that, that letting the watercolor do the work is is what makes the painting work. It's a collaborative effort with the paint and the water. This is cobalt teal, just going straight down. Really pops out. Here's that finished painting again, so you can see where that cobalt teal is. Now I'm doing a mixture of the thala blue red shade that has a little bit of cobalt violet mixed into it. Next painting I'm going to work on is a herd of elephants. I'm going to start with granulating earth tones as the background wash. So I'll have transparent yellow oxide, transparent red or brown oxide. Um, I'm going to probably make an indigo. Um, the indigo that I have just fades quite a bit, um, not from a light fastness standpoint, but from a goes down very dark and gets very light or I might use it and a little bit of cobalt teal, I don't know. But just to get some more earthy tones and then I'll use vibrant colored pencils and those will pop through here and there, which will really look extra vibrant against the muted tones of the earth tones. Now here I have that cut out in place and above it I have uh, another photocopy just so I can reference where something is on the cutout and then draw in the leg or the belly or the outline around the calf. And it just helps me find the colored pencil drawing in the different colors of paint. This is cobalt blue deep and cobalt blue and Prussian blue. Later I will go in with some cadmiums to highlight the shoulder. Um, in a moment I'll lift the paper and you can really see the background. I should have taken a picture of the initial wash once it dried so you could see the starting point.
Here is also a final picture zoomed in to show where the colored pencil still shows through. I've really noticed on the rainbow elephant and on this that the yellow will pop when there's a darker color over it. Obviously the contrast is there and then lighter colors will really show darker colors through. I'm trying to work on it in an impressionistic style where the shadows are somewhat complementary or an, an, an analogous complement. So it's not the exact complement, but it's close. So I did a lot of oranges and purples in the uh, rhino and calf, and they do show through when you get close up. Again, the goal, my goal in each painting is to have about 70 to 80% of the painting done in the initial wash. I think I came pretty close to that range on this. Um, now that's not necessarily based on time, it's just completion. Some of the details you put in, let it dry, go back, paint the negative shape, paint the actual shape. In painting the mother rhino, I have to make sure to not lose the baby rhino. And actually the mother's shadow is what makes the calf stand out. have an assortment of squirrel hair mops. Squirrel hair is a little bit squirrelier than a sable or a Kalinske. Um, they, I don't know if it's from a bushier part of the animal, but I really like the squirrels because once, once they're wet, they're pretty well contained. Here you can see I'm adding in some oranges and uh, yellows, reds to uh, outline the mother rhino. Um, it does bring it out a little bit, but then going in to the rest of the painting and darkening around the mother, uh, putting in different colors um, really um, pops it out. I mentioned in the video with the bee eaters that I do like to go subtle. And this is about the amount of subtlety I like, but I realize that with some paintings or some subject matter, it needs a little bit more uh, definition to make the painting work. Otherwise it's, perhaps too abstract. And this is something that while I'm being true to myself and the style that I like to paint in, I have to select
solicit feedback from others or beta test. As you can see, I mixed a little bit of a green with all of the different blues, and then I've added in a little bit of orange to uh, step it back a little bit. So it's a very, uh, very dull green going in just to put in a, a shrub. And then, as you can see, I'm putting down a blue to negatively painting around the horns to one accentuate the horns and then add distant trees or water or what have you in the uh, photographic reference it is uh, some trees off in the distance video is at 1553 So I lifted the paint up and then dropped in a couple of drops and now they'll bleed into where the page is still wet. They'll just sl that'll slowly drip into that or blend into that. Here's another shot of the final painting as I'm putting in this grass. Now I'm using a fan brush to splatter, kind of load that up, get a little bit of a bead going. And then I also use the fan brush to just kind of flick in a few blades of grass here and there. Now I'm obviously putting in some oranges, some highlights here and there, um, just to use complementary colors or analogous complements to help that pop without it screaming. using some of that orangish yellow to also paint around the negative space and the underside of the mother rhino just to get it to pop that way as well because the light would be hitting the grasses just as it's hitting the shoulder and the head of the uh, mother and calf. This stage is just putting in a little bit, step back, review it, put in a little bit more. Um, because less is more, there does come a tipping point where you've just done too much. And with watercolor, if you've done too much, you might not be able to undo that, but it might mean you need to do something elsewhere to offset it. So creating a balance and a harmony is uh, sometimes achieved just by very simple touches. So I am approaching the end of this video. Uh, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and watching. Uh, the next video will be a herd of elephants 
Um, here is the final painting. Um, thanks again for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you uh, with a herd of elephants. Thank you.